the, for uh, a network, uh, specifically like BYU TV, the biggest question is, uh, can these people execute what they, what they say? Can they actually deliver what the, the story they're telling me, right? Um, so um, every pitch is welcomed with an enormous amount of skepticism. This is a really cool idea, but can you pull this off? Um, you know, can you fulfill on the promise you're making to me? Um, now, my philosophy has always been find enormously talented people and cling to them <laughs> as, as strongly as you can. Um, that's always been my philosophy and it's worked well for me. Um, and so I was just enormously grateful that, um, that uh, Adam and Ryan were open to the idea of working with myself and Orson Scott Card. So we, so I, I won't go through the whole process of, of how we actually developed the idea, but we developed an idea. It was initially developed as a feature film, um, but then we were approached by BYU TV, TV and asked what we were developing, and, and we, we altered uh, altered the, the narrative, the whole structure of the story, to be uh, a television show. Um, and we presented BYU TV with a with a bunch of. Um, concept art that really represented what the show is. I don't know if you're actually even familiar with our show, but it's a science fiction show. Um, it takes place 400 years after the extinction of the human race, and a benevolent alien species is reconstituting humans. They're bringing humans back to life. The humans, we call them reborns, they don't know why um, they're, they're, they're being reconstituted. And they quickly learn that there are um, a whole lot of new dangers that exist on Earth that have, that have been developed since human extinction. So, kind of a really high concept and not even in the, the zip code that BYU TV. And so, when they, um, when they showed mild interest, I, I thought, we even actually had this conversation, that there was probably a 2% chance that this was actually um, going to sustain their interest because it was so foreign to the content that the network currently produced. Um, and yet, here we are. So we, we, we scoured online through tens of thousands of concept art to try to find those pieces of existing art that legitimately represented our idea. Um, and if you're familiar with the show, um, this will hopefully look a little bit like extinct. Um, the show is set, uh, he, well it's not set in Utah, it's set on Earth, but we shot in Utah, and so the show looks like Utah, uh, in that there is a very diverse landscape, um, and that was part of our pitch. Our part of our pitch was that we would be shooting in the state, and we would be using the state's extremely diverse geography to heighten the production value of the show. You know, Hollywood, uh, a lot of Hollywood productions, as you know, come to this state because Utah is beautiful. Utah is gorgeous to look upon. So we, part of our pitch was that the state would be uh, essentially a character in the show. Uh, our concept art not only I I included geography, but it included some initial costume design, knowing that we knew that that once we had a legitimate costume designer that, that we would all develop that, but we just wanted to give them a, a sense of the milieu, the milieu of the show, right? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Um, and so once they said, oh, that's interesting, we like that, this is an interesting concept, you have cleared hurdle one. <laughs> now we want to hire you to develop both um, a pilot script, a, a series Bible, and a sizzle reel. And we actually, in, in, in the sizzle reel, which we'll actually show you, uh, was a suggestion that Adam and Ryan had, and it was a brilliant suggestion because it was evidence to the network. This is what the show is gonna look like. This is what you're buying, this is what you're paying for, right? Um, and so they agreed, and they gave us a sum of money to do pilot, script, uh, pilot development. Now, that obviously included the pilot script, which is the most important piece in, in our pitch, because if we couldn't write the show, if we couldn't deliver a script for the show, then there was no show, right? Now, I had never written television before. I had written feature films, I had written novels and comics and plays and things, but I'd actually never written television. And so, um, we needed to, again, enormous amount of skepticism. They knew that, right? Um, can this guy actually, can this team actually produce a show? 
So I feverishly read as many pilot scripts as I could online. I studied how they were structured. I made note of how the acts were, uh, were broken and on what page of the script Act 1 ended, what page of the script Act 2 ended. I read dozens of pilot scripts. I read books on how to write pilot scripts, uh, and then I tried to write one. Um, and then we also, we also produced this document, which was our, our series Bible. Okay? Adam and Ryan went out into the wilderness with a camera to shoot the sizzle, sizzle reel, and they got some still images that would just represent um, what the show looks like. Ryan Little, who was a co-showrunner of the show and director of most of the episodes, cinematographer from most of the episodes, enormously talented individual, just took some gorgeous photos. We then hired a visual effects supervisor, who was also the supervisor on our show, named Devin Beacons, who created, as you can see in that image, uh, one of the characters of our show. That's not what it looks like in the show, but uh, if you've seen the show, there's a red drone and a yellow drone. This is a very early drone concept that Devin created, um, just to give BYU a sense of what the show looks like. We designed the logo, again, knowing this was all placeholder, right? This was just playing pretend. It's like, so let's just imagine what the show is and this is what it might kind of look like. We gave them, oh, fiddle. We gave them a very, very detailed uh, story bible that included um, an in-depth dive into the universe, who are the principal characters on the show, who are the principal aliens on the show, um, and then we did actually a 10 episode breakdown of, of season one. Okay, so we gave them a pilot script, this is what happens in the first episode. This is what's going to happen in the remaining nine episodes. Um, strangely enough, and this isn't necessarily uh, atypical, but um, the this, the show, actually I would say, I don't know what you think, Adam, maybe 30, 40% of our, of, our, of our outline actually remained in the show. Uh, it, it evolved as, as, we, as we got further into the show. So we gave them that document, we gave them the pilot script, which of course Adam and, and Ryan and all of us were heavily involved in, and there were various iterations of that before we actually turned it in. Um, there was the, the, bi the series Bible, which was probably a 30-page document, um, so a dense document, again, because the, all our objective was allay, those, allay that skepticism, right? Put that skepticism to rest by proving overtly that we do know what we're doing, um, or at least we have the appearance of knowing what we're doing, um, and we can actually pull off. Um, because he, here's the truth that I learned. I learned this when I lived in LA, when I was first working in the film industry. Um, people who finance films value an American dollar just as much as you do. <laughs> and um, they are, even though they're in an enormously risky industry, they are extremely risk averse. And so um, we set out from the get-go to prove to BYU TV that this would be a breeze, that this is what we were born to do, um, and we, we fooled them. <laughs> um, so and now I'd like to show you, hopefully the sound system is going to work, I'd like to show you the sizzle reel that we put together. Again, if you've seen the show, um, this will look vaguely familiar to the show, but you'll also see some things in here that you didn't see in the show. Because uh, again, this was, this was our attempt at wowing them, um, knowing again that this was unlike anything BYU TV had done before. Loud enough.
my chance to keep it. If I'm going to die again, it might as well be for something I believe in. You believe people can change. You believe in second chances. So I don't know if you could hear uh, the dialogue there, but um, so you know we we took the BYU TV logo, we put it at the end. Ooh, look, you could own this. This could be yours. Um, <laughs> um, if you if you're familiar with the show, you probably recognize those two actors. Um, Jake Stormont played Duncan on the show. Uh, Melanie Stone um, played Rowan uh, on the show. Um, it, so again, the, we just. You know, we, we, we grabbed a costume designer, hey, make these people look cool. Um, you know, there's, there's one scene in, in, in the sizzle reel where Jake pulls this strange orb out of the sand, and, and they're like, what is this? We're like, we don't know, it doesn't matter, it just looks cool. <laughs> um, it's mysterious. Um, so much of what you see in, in the sizzle reel was just to communicate to BYU TV, oh look, the show's gonna have some really um, great acting, it's going to have some meaningful dialogue. It's going to have um, some mystery about it. There's going to be a high threat level to our heroes. They're running for their lives. There's going to be amazing visual effects. You know, Devin built that spaceship just for the sizzle reel. We actually didn't even use it in the show, but I think it's enormously awesome. Um, we didn't use big firing lasers in the show either, either but um, we, just, we just created this sizzle. And honestly, I, I, they like the pilot script, but I think Adam, you tell me if I'm wrong. I think the sizzle reel is what actually sold them on actually producing the pilot. Um, because, you know, Adam and Ryan said, oh, let's do a sizzle reel. I was like, oh, is that necessary? They're like, yes, trust us. It's necessary. It's going to work. And, and they, of course, were right. Do you have anything to add so far? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think, I mean, I think as Aaron articulated with these kind of these steps, and, and um, I assume the purpose of this presentation is to hopefully inspire and arm each of you with an opportunity if you are, you know, pursuing this kind of some, some uh, tidbits of information that can and inspire your endeavors, but um, the sizzle reel, it, it, whether it be with Extinct or, or other things that we've done, help those who say they understand to f completely understand what is going on. And it is taking something from the, the written page, which was masterfully done by Aaron and Orson, and put it on the screen so it was clear in their minds. When we're telling them that there's visual effects, they're seeing <coughs> what, they, what, what, an what they can anticipate in those things. And so uh, it is, in, in, the, in the process of Extinct, it was something that was part of the development in which we were, we, once we crossed the hurdle of the pitch to them and then they engaged us to do a pilot script and a series Bible, it was part of that to which was funded. I mean, it's not cheap. Uh, or easily accessible at times to go out and, and do those things. But if you're in a position that you can do those things, it's enormously helpful. But it was nice to have the network fund that part of it that I think ultimately allowed them to take it and sell it through their upline and those that um, ultimately give the thumbs up to, to proceed. Yeah, and, and you know, in, again, they did give us funding to produce this as a real to get a sense of it, but we, we produced it on the cheap. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a brief scene, or brief shot, rather, where our early iteration of a skin writer, which are the villains, he opens his shock rod, you know, that was made with like um, sprinkler parts that we got at Home Depot and um, that we all glued together and painted, um, which is how filmmaking normally works, but this was done uh, on, on the real cheap. Uh, and of course it helped that, um, that you know, Adam's such a brilliant producer and, and Ryan is such a gifted cinematographer. Um, Great. Now, I just want to also briefly just give you a sense of, so that was, so that was hurdle number two, right? And, and so they, they read the script, they read the Bible, they saw this as a real, and they said, oh, okay, okay, our, our skepticism is slowly diminishing. Um, now we're going to finance the production of a pilot, right? So it's not, it's not here a pitch, oh, great, here's, you know, here's millions of dollars to go make season one. That's not the case. There, there are stages, okay? So now they're going, to, they're going to give us money to produce the pilot, and then if they like what we produce, if they like what the pilot looks like, then they'll actually uh, request more episodes. At least that's our hope. So once they gave us financing to produce the pilot, we started um, 
developing the show and and the 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 actual unique aesthetic of the show. Devin Beacons, who designed all that stuff in the sizzle reel, and who amazingly um, is is a single person. Most of the visual effects on our show were done by two people. You know, if you, if you, if you look at um, if, if you look at any Hollywood movie and you stay for the credits, you'll see that there is an army of of people who do the visual effects. Generally, thousands of people are invested in this whole process. On Extinct, it was two guys, right? Um, and Devin, who was our visual effects supervisor and also our lead designer, did most most of the work. Most of what is visually stunning about our show um, is his handiwork. So these are some initial uh, designs he did for uh, the drones, um, both red and yellow drone. Again, this will mean nothing if you haven't seen the show, but um, just to give you a sense of um, how detailed this process was, once we clicked on it, or we uh, chose a design, um, Devin continued to develop it. We also also cast the show. We cast out of New York, London, and LA. Um, this is actually uh, a screenshot of two people we actually cast in the, in the show auditioning together, Jacqueline Hales and Matthew Bellows, um, who are both enormously talented. Um, of course, for the actual casting process, um, the scenes they were used to cast the show were not scenes that um, were ever in the show. I wrote the scenes just for the casting process uh, solely, and it was just to get a sense of can these individuals um, um, encapsulate, be these, these characters. I think actually in this scene, Matthew Bellows is auditioning for the role of Ezra. He was a bit, he was essentially, in the end, he was cast in the role of Jax. Um, Let's see. And so then, and then we presented our casting recommendations to BYU TV, um, um, and nearly everyone we recommended actually uh, was approved by the network. The only, the only person that didn't play this role was Silas. Nick Lucan uh, actually came later in the show on, on, on episode seven. Silas was played by uh, Jack Depew. So uh, again, we're involving the network throughout the process. We're showing them our drone designs. We're showing them our casting recommendations. We're showing them our cast videos. Um, they, are, they are an integral part of this whole process, obviously. Um, and then when we shot the pilot, I just actually just grabbed a bunch of images from the show. Not all of these are actually from the pilot episode. That's Jack Depew, who played Silas on the show. That's actually from the 10th episode, but anyway. Um, when we when we produced the show, when we produced the show, um, the pilot episode, we didn't have this enormous budget um, to to create all of the sets of the show. If you've seen the show, you know there's a uh, there's a large settlement that's uh, where our where our basically home base for our um, heroes. That includes an exterior set, exterior walled set and interior sets that include the control room, living quarters, the kitchen, Athena's work area, all those things. Well, we couldn't build any of those things for the pilot. We didn't have the money to produce those things. So in the original pilot script, our heroes actually went inside the settlement. We discovered we can't afford to do that. So um, they did, So we, 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 we changed the ending of the pilot so that they actually didn't go inside. And then we saved, um, uh, or not say, we used production uh, budget that came later to produce the rest of our sets. So in fact, all we built, if you've seen the pilot episode, all we built of the original settlement was the front wall where, where the gate was. Everything else was, was, was digitally created. There was no interior of, of the settlement. It was just, um, no, that's not true. We actually created the, the, the far door, didn't we? Yeah, so we created, we created the two doors so that when the first door opens, you can see in the distance the second door, um, but there's nothing else around it. Um, yes, Devin, our original flex supervisor, added all that later. Um, one, 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 I think the reason why this show succeeded, at least it succeeded in my view, um, is because Adam and Ryan are so seasoned and experienced in making a production look so much more expensive than it actually is. Um, they've done that with all of their films. If you look at any of their films, you're like, whoa, this is a huge multi-million dollar film. It's like, no, we made it for a couple million dollars. Or we made it for, you know, $500,000 or whatever. 
Um, and they did the same with Extinct. We somehow, uh, and much of that credit is due to Diane, who is here. Diane, who is our production designer, lead production designer on the show. Really, did. yes. Uh, everything you're seeing here, folks, the obelisk, um, these doors, all of the interior set. Um, Diane is a genius. Um, we would give her a sense of what we were looking for, and then she would come back with sketches and drawings, and CAD drawings, and we would say, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> because they all always far exceeded anything we could have imagined. Um, let's see. Um, so that was the, that was the, I'm just kind of zipping through these. Again, the, none of these existed for the pilot episode. This was the interior of the alien spacecraft that we used in the series. Um, Chad Michael Collins, actually, who played Ezra on the show, the lead of the show, essentially, it was, it was a, it was a, we had, we had a, a full cast, of course, and everyone was kind of a star, but Chad was our principal star. Chad was actually, uh, we cast him last, um, and we cast him on a submitted tape audition only. We actually never had any callbacks with Chad, which is atypical, um, but just because of scheduling and circumstances, that was the case for Chad. Um, great. So we, so again, that was a, that was our hurdle. We we per, we produced the pilot. BYU TV liked the pilot, except we, we realized that BYU TV wasn't the decision makers in this process. And this is the case, it, 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 it is, it's not solely unique to BYU TV. BYU TV's hierarchy is certainly unique. You know, the, the people who actually make decisions for BYU TV is certainly unique. Um, but this isn't atypical as far as a, a, a typical network. Um, the, the people who will make final decisions on series aren't usually the people that you've been working with day to day on the development of the show. They're people who have big offices and expensive furniture in those offices. <laughs> um, so we then, once we created the pilot, we actually had to take the, the, um, the pilot episode and other pieces to um, a, a much higher authority, higher capital H authority in Salt Lake City um, that oversees BYU TV and approves all of their funding. Um, so we again made a document. You'll notice there's one little tweak on this document. There's a new drone in that image because now we have developed the drone. Now this document um, was somewhat different because it was tailored to the people who would be reading it so it was all about the feel-good nature of the show. It was all about the the, the heartstrings that that the, sh that the show would pluck. It was all about the messaging of the show, the feel-good nature of the show, because we were tailoring our presentation to the folks in Salt Lake. Um, and then we also created this uh, behind-the-scenes uh, video uh, for those same people. doesn't show up in modern fiction. It's kind of embarrassing to literary writers today to have any character show any kind of faith or belief. And certainly the great issues of religious thought are simply not addressed. But uh, in science fiction, that's where everything is still very much alive, even though science fiction rarely has any open religion. Uh, it nevertheless deals with the big issues metaphorically. We always have a choice. In life, we, we can do the easy thing, or we can do the right thing. I think the magical part about Extinct is exploring these themes of redemption, appreciation, of love, of family. The love we feel for our family doesn't die when we do. There are eternal truths here, and those who have ears to hear will hear. Everybody makes mistakes, but the challenge in this life is learning from those mistakes and becoming the people that God expects us to be. You know, the show, it's really exciting for the viewers and, and aesthetically pleasing, and there's a bunch of action to keep you entertained, but I think there's an underlying uh, message, and I think that it has a lot of heart. I think this is a show about second chances.
Um, so you'll see that um, there were several several uh, shots in this this new scissor reel that we had in the original scissor reel. That's because we had to present to the folks in Salt Lake, but we hadn't created any visual effects yet for the actual pilot. We were still very early in the stages of, of, of completing the pilot, but we needed to showcase the, 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 the visual effects capabilities of the show, so we essentially stole from ourselves. Um, everything that's said in that sizzle reel is true about the show, and, and it's sincere. All of, um, all of the themes, I'm hesitant to use that word, but we'll say the word, all the themes of the show, that's absolutely what the show is about. But again, we knew we were talking, we knew who the audience was for this video, so we knew what we had to communicate in the video. So even though there's, there's a lot of scenes, a lot of uh, talking heads in this video saying very profound things, we actually scripted all that beforehand. <laughs> And we, uh, what should I say? Say this. This is the message you need to communicate to our audience. Say this, okay? Or here's a sheet of 10 things. Which one of these would you like to say? I'll say this, and I'll say it as, and we'll say it a couple times so that by the, so we can at least have one take of me saying it naturally, as if I'm just thinking it up right now. Um, so um, it was, a, it was a, a highly um, meticulously assembled video that we did because, again, we knew who our audience was, right? And, and it was, um, and, and again, in this process, because we had shot the pilot, and, and as Aaron mentioned, we pulled from some of the visual effects that were done for the sizzle reel that you had seen, based on the timeline. Television, there's a quick time turnaround, right? And so we did the pilot in July of 2016, and finished it the first week in August. And we had two weeks before we had to present um, a, a, a pilot edit, as well as this sizzle for an approval on August 27th. And so there was a quick turnaround, and um, so there was there was uh, you know, and it was it was the it was a, a an early um, an early opportunity for us as a as a team to recognize how quickly things moved and needed to move uh, in an effort to accomplish what we set out to do. Um, we, there's other things that we showed them that I that we don't have time to show you here. We actually showed them two scenes from the pilot episode. Um, and, and again, we picked the two scenes that, that were best going to please this audience that we were showing it to. Um, one of the scenes was Ezra has a discussion with Fina, who are two of the new reborns. Uh, he's, and it's about her reluctance, actually, to be reborn in this world. Um, and the only question that was asked by the highest authority in the room was, um, isn't that guy married? These two don't get together, do they? Like, no, no, they don't get together. Um, so that's really all they were really concerned about. But, um, but, but he's it, dead. It, what's that? But he's dead. But he's dead. Oh yes. Well, you could make that argument, but, but, but marriage is eternal. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Um, also, we, the, the last thing we want to show you is. Um, just a, a trailer of season one, and then we'll gladly take any questions you have on any aspect of the production of the show, or the writing of the show, or the design of the show, or anything. Um, just in, just in, in terms of once once we pass the hurdle and they greenlit us for the remaining episodes of season one, um, we uh, we <clears throat> we were able to jump right into it, and of course, uh, in, in course in the process of of, of that. BYU Television had some changes administratively um, in that process, um, and and with that administrative change came came new administrators who had a different perspective of things. Now, there was an advantage to us during the production and delivery of things because we had a, a lot of autonomy and a lot of creative. We, we we took we took the charge and the blessing from those who gave us the blessing to move forward. Um, we took it very seriously to deliver what we told them we would deliver. And we did it. Every, every box that they gave us to check, we delivered. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we took that very seriously so that although we had autonomy and a tremendous amount of creative control, Aaron can, can confirm this, we um, very rarely, if, if at all, and maybe less than on, a, uh, on one hand could count the times we were actually given a note, creatively speaking, uh, to change something or to address something, uh, so it was very it was very fulfilling from a creative perspective uh, and liberating to be able to maintain the integrity of what was being created without 
uh, perceived influence and people trying to direct you on what to do from an administrative perspective. Uh, but, but at the same time, once all of that was done, because the new administrators were not fully engaged, it wasn't their show, which ultimately ended up in them not continuing it, uh, not because of a lack of not meeting the objectives that were outlined for us, uh, but because just a different direction. But anyway. Yeah, you, you know, the hard, the hard reality of this is um, you love what you create, um, but does it meet the expectations of the person who's actually making the decision? Is it the kind of show that they want to make? Initially it was, and then once the administration changed, uh, there were other, other directions for the network. Just sci-fi wasn't, uh, wasn't what they were interested in pursuing. That said, uh, I'm really proud of the show. I, I, I consider it um, a highlight of my career. I, I enormously valued the friendships that I developed as a result of it. There's just the tremendous people, many of whom are here, um, who mean the world to me and who I learned a great deal from and who, um, who made all of us look good because of their talent. So again, we want to show you one more trailer and then we're happy to take any questions about any aspect of the show that you'd like to ask. Has any questions, and if not, we'll end early. Yes. So, when you get the green light, do they give you, do they just say deliver the rest of the season now, or do you have to say like do three more and then we'll see? Or was there any like benchmarks you had to meet? No, once we got the green light for the remaining episodes, we were green lit for nine remaining episodes and we went forward. Now, in that process, based on things that we did, we didn't discuss on this. Um, there were additional scripts that were had previously been written as contracted by them so as part of the approval process that they could see again those uh, Elaine concerns of us being able to do what we say we're going to do and they, they commissioned three additional scripts so script two three and four um, were commissioned and, and, and done up before the approval of, of remaining nine episodes again just kind of those uh, that process of approval. 
Yeah, on the back. You had said that the way you came to you. Do you guys have the Bible already done, or were you just working on concepts? Well, uh, to give specifics about that, um, we had, as Aaron mentioned, we had originally got together and, and developed this as a feature film. And uh, Scott Swafford, who's a personal friend, um, he and I went to lunch on my birthday in September of 2015. Uh, so September 9th, we were eating sushi up in North Orem, and, and he was just kind of giving me a lay of the land of what they were doing and what their objectives were. And he said something to me about who they were trying to focus on, and I just mentioned, hey, I had just read our first draft of, of a feature that we're doing, but honestly, the world in which it's being created could potentially be better served by being explored in an episodic fashion and allowing to dig into what Scott Card and Aaron have created. And, um, and he immediately said, yes, I, 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 I'm interested in that. So then I went back and talked with, with Scott and Aaron and, and Ryan, and the initial reaction was like, well, well no, 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 this, no, 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 this is a feature. This is a whole different beast. And it's like, yeah, but could it be a television show? And so uh, the producerial kind of aspect of me came out and said, oh, okay, great, except can it be this? And, uh, and it ultimately became that. So anybody, anybody else? We're, we got seven minutes. Yeah. Um, so since you guys are on BYU TV, are you guys employed by BYU TV? Oh, good question. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in terms of in terms of us, we're not. We're, we con they contract with us uh, specifically the entity that was created for the show, Extinct, um, and uh, to to produce and fulfill our respective responsibilities. So we're not employed by BYU Television. They contract the services. With us, and 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 for to just further that, the uh, the IP related to the creation of the show resides with us specifically because Aaron and Ryan, or Aaron and uh, and Scott are going to continue to write novels irrespective of our success of placing it at a different network. The IP and characters and all those sort of things reside here versus there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess the biggest question is, what is the hope for having extinct? Uh, uh, on another platform to continue. Well, we we would love to. I would love to be. We'd love to be in a position to be able to answer that today. That would be amazing. Uh, but uh, it is it is certainly an uphill battle. Um, uh, we're exploring every every possibility in every streaming platform and uh, and handful of broadcasters that sci-fi fits with uh, are all being um, presented the information and exploring that right now. We're in the process of creating a very specific sales presentation trailer. That'll be utilized uh, for for every um, every uh, every entity that you can think of in your mind. Yes, they're all being presented. So, in that case, but if if it did go on another platform, would you have to basically reboot the whole thing? It all depends on what they what they want. I mean, it, um, it it's there's a lot of there's a lot of muddied circumstances that we find ourselves in that we did not in initially anticipate. We didn't anticipate that there would be an administrative change. Which, uh, which had we anticipated that, and certainly will in future uh, <laughs> arrangements, um, would, would have would have would have directed how we would have drawn some very clear lines on certain things. Uh, but uh, yeah, I you know I will say that uh, BYU Television has been very supportive and encouraging of, of, of the efforts, as well as um, utilizing some uh, previous sales agencies that we've used to help us facilitate this. So. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the budget. When when someone's thinking about a TV series and looking at a budget, do you think that's the budget that you had? Is the were you satisfied with that, or do you think um, if you were to do it again, you would have to change your budget, or do you think that worked in Utah? More, always yeah, more. Yeah, more. <laughs> yeah, but but it worked in Utah, or what? Do you it think? did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, and this is Leslie Smooth, who was our. Uh, on set uh, dresser and, and, and set decorator. Uh, decorator. Excuse me. Maybe she can answer that question. Do you want more? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, from a from a producer's perspective, yes, it was an ambitious endeavor for for sure. But we delivered it um, on budget and, uh, and and delivered at the level that we creatively uh, had set out to do. Were there limitations? Yes, but in in, in any creative endeavor, the boxes that we find ourselves in traditionally lead us to. Uh, greater work, and and so would would we like more? Yes, uh, but uh, but but it, it was it, it, it worked out. And there's and as, and Leslie, as you know, and, and and those in the room who do this, 
there's lots of robbing from Peter to pay Paul in circumstance. And once you have a definitive box that you have to live in, you start to see in you know, some areas, uh, like in, in extincts, with as much as we had in construction, construction came under, but it allowed for that under to cover some additional visual effects overage uh, in the post-production side of things. So there's a way to kind of move those things around. And, and, and BYU's expectation was is they, they paid a price, and that's, they didn't want to go beyond that price, and we had to deliver for what we were going to deliver at that price. We're also often asked how much the show costs to produce, uh, and it costs about the same as a season of Studio C. They spent the same on they spent the same on Studio C as they spent on our show. And we were a we were an hour drama. And, and and to further that, there's a show that they're greenlighting right now that's a 30 minute scripted uh, comedy that is the same as what one hour drama was. So it's it has its challenges when. But every, wherever you're pitching your work, you're always going to face into, run into to, to challenges. So. Yes. So I'm wondering, in, in your considerations for the future, have you considered going back to a feature film to come back and show us a feature, uh, tying all this together? Well, the feature feature rights are there's there's no gray area there. We, those are ours, and so we could certainly do that. But I think we want to. I think and again. We, we've had we've had conversations about kind of what the approach is right now. It's primarily focused on to see what the opportunities are for the future of the show. Could there be a, a revisiting of that, even in that circumstance? I certainly hope so. Um, it uh, we were greenlit originally for five seasons, but to be based on an, on on, in, on in, uh, season by season approval, and so uh, the world in which uh, was created by Aaron and Scott uh, deserves to have some some answers. And uh, I certainly hope it can be answered in additional seasons, but if, if uh, push comes to shove, uh, certainly a feature option is, is certainly a, a, an option to do that. But there'll be books, and you can read the books. <laughs> Were you able to put into storage uh, your sets, props, and those kind of things and costumes that you would need to continue? Um, we did initially when we when we had to disassemble the set and we had to free up studio space. We did initially, but we, the, the sets no longer exist. So once we sell them, once we sell the show again, he says optimistically, we'll have to re reconstruct the show. Um, I think we're out of time. I, I, we 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 recognize Leslie and Diane. I also want to recognize Penny Johnson, who is our script supervisor on the show, um, and. We, Oh, Danny, Danny back there. Wave, Danny. So great. Joshua French was in the pilot. Joshua, yes, Joshua, yes, great. Good to see you, my friend. Anyway, thank you all for having us. Uh, it was a delight, and best of luck if this is something you're going to pursue. Hopefully, there is something here that that might help you out. Thanks again.